Hello everybody, if you like this video, please consider donating to us on Patreon. We want to keep on making education free and available to everybody, um, no matter what. So this is a perfect way to do that. There are different tiers and different ways you can donate. If you did enjoy this lesson and you've got some money to spare, please consider donating on Patreon. What I want to do in this lesson is pick up from where we left off when we were looking at the philosophy of ontology, okay? And we're going to take a bit of an introduction in this lesson to the concept in philosophy of abstract entities, okay? And we're going to be looking, uh, sort of recapping the Quinean ontological method for determining what one's ontological commitments should be. And then we're going to look at really what are abstract entities, and then we're going to finish by exploring some of the things that we're going to be looking at in the next series of lessons on the philosophy of abstract entities. So, like I say, as an introduction, in the last lesson on ontology, we introduced what was called the uh, the Quinean ontological method. Okay, and I go into the Quinean ontological method a lot in that video. So, so more detail. So there's more detail in there in that lesson. So more detail in uh, ontology lesson which I'll link in the description. Effectively, the method, or the Quinean method for ontology uh, can be used to um, try and determine our ontological commitments, to try and work out the kind of questions about what kind of entities exist. And it focuses on the application of what Quine himself called regimentation. And regimentation is the next line, the, 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 effectively the definition of regimentation is that in order to analyse the existence of entities, one must regiment the sentence into first order logic. So first order predicate logic. That's what FOL stands for. So first, first order predicate logic. Predicate logic. And that's what Quine would do to try and find one's ontological commitments to you know, to ge generally to um, sentences and to uh, and to entities okay now this is important as this is really the fundamental the starting point when we're looking at the uh, at metaphysics in general and so you can't really look at other concepts like persistence, causality, philosophy of time, the notion of free will, the notion of material objects, if we don't have some kind of ontological grounding uh, to which where we where we base our uh, ontological beliefs. And so we looked and analysed uh, the Quinean method, the application of regimentation, and then we also looked at some other ideas, the, the, the method of paraphrase, for example, was another one that we looked at. And effectively, uh, to commit to a sentence using regimentation, those entities must stand in as, as values of bound variables. Okay, So this method was used and applied broadly to find the uh, ontological commitments in the last lesson. So like I said, if you want more detail on this, have a look in the last lesson. And this was to just to bro this was a broad introduction to finding one's ontological commitments. In this lesson and in this next series of lessons, we're going to see if we can apply the Quinean method and other methods of ontology to what we call abstract entities. And that's what we're going to look at now. We're going to have to ask ourselves what is an abstract entity. So, for the next few lessons, we're going to assume that material objects already exist. Okay. So the first question we want to ask is, what is a material object? What is a material object? Material object. I'll explain that a little bit later on. But we're going to assume that material objects exist. We're not going to try and um, effectively base our ontological commitments uh, and try and ground everything uh, of, for our ontological commitments. We want to focus on specifically the ontology of abstract entities. So we, we, we want to we would forget about material objects and just assume that they exist. So if you want to look at the philosophical analysis of uh, material objects, uh, watch the lesson on ontology. Uh, it, we go into that a little bit more um, detail. And there will be some future lessons where we look at the metaphysics of material objects specifically as well. One question is then, what exists apart from material objects? 
objects that exist in the real world. And one example of the kind of questions we might be asking is, uh, do mathematical things exist? So, for example, mathematics tells us that odd numbers and even numbers uh, exist, that there are such things as an even number and an odd number, but do they actually, can we actually be ontologically committed to entities, mathematical entities, such as the existence of even numbers and odd numbers? If we believe in mathematical objects, then Quine would say we are ontologically commitment, uh, ontologically committed to, say, the existence of numbers, or the existence of odd numbers, or prime numbers, or complex numbers, for example, all these different things. So, if numbers are abstract entities, then, therefore, we have to be committed to some kind of ab abstract entity. So, can we effectively rule out everything now and say that uh, ab we uh, abstract entities exist so abstract entities exist do abstract entities exist effectively because if we're ontologically committed to mathematical objects they are what we would call abstract and so if we're committed to them then we have to be committed to at least some kind of abstract entity and therefore we we would say that abstract entities we can be ontologically committed to them so the question one might ask is why would we say that things like numbers and mathematical um, things be considered as abstract entities well what we do is we say that they are abstract in the sense that they do not they do not occupy any kind of spatio-temporal reality they don't have, they don't occupy, they don't exist in space or time, if that makes sense. So, for example, compare this to a material object, like a chair. A chair has three spatial dimensions, and it exists through a temporal dimension. Or a coffee cup, again, it has three spa uh, spatial dimensions and one temporal uh, dimension. So, we would you can sort of we can it's not too difficult to find some kind of delineation between something like a chair something that exists physically within space and time and something like uh the number four which is something that we would be you know hard pressed to say doesn't exist but we can't say that it exists spatiotemporally we have to say it exists as something else it's an abstract entity okay so this is what we're trying to do. This is a good way of trying to, to try and define what we mean when we say um, when we talk about abstract entities. If we delineate between abstract and material objects, then we can find some kind of uh, some kind of definition as to what an abstract entity is. And one of the definitions that we could talk about is something that has no kind of spatio-temporal reality. So just to finish off, in this series of lessons on uh, the metaphysics of abstract entities, we're going to look at the ontological status of ab abstract entities. Okay, We'll begin with a more general argument for the existence of abstract entities and then look at some uh, more detailed theories of abstract entities. We're going to look at the theory of nominalism. We're going to explore and analyse mathematical objects in a lot more detail than we have today. I'm also going to look at the idea of universals. So stay tuned for a number of lessons on the metaphysics of abstract entities.